All right, it's um, two o'clock on June 11th, and the Bridgewater Tree Committee is now in session. Here comes Nicole. And we uh, have a full house. Uh, who are we missing? Nobody, right? Paul. Paul, oh yeah, I'm sorry. Paul emailed me saying he may not be able to be on. He said that um, the uh, a lot of people are on uh, vacation and he's the only one in the office sometimes. So he said he may not be with us today. Somebody's got to keep the snow plowed. That's right. Well, if, <laughs> if, if you use the word snow, I'm not sure anybody is needed anymore. That's unfortunate. Right. Okay. Um, First order of business is the approval of the minutes of May 14th, 2024. Do I have a motion to approve for discussion purposes? So moved. Motion to be made. Is there a second to the motion? Second to make the uh, second by Pat. Any discussion on the motion? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody against? Motion passes. No public comment. We don't have a host of people wanting to make a comment. I just want to um, make one comment. I, in in um, preparing for this meeting, I guess it's been on my mind all along the last uh, few weeks in that I've always felt that um, last year was very good for the tree committee that we did quite a bit we moved along we seem to be recognized and people know us and so forth this year i, I sort of feel we're and maybe it's my fault we're sort of stuck in, in certain things and uh i hope we can move certain things along so we can at least say we've accomplished things like the uh, tree ordinance and so forth so maybe we may need i know shirley's brought up the point about meeting separately to get this going Maybe we need to do something like that. If, if at the end of the day today we feel we we just um, are still stuck. Anyway, that's just my opinion. Okay, the first um, thing on the old business is Arbor Day 2025. I mentioned at the last meeting, um, Nicole brought up the Arbor Day for this year, and uh, I, I admit that it was slipping my mind. I think um, we need to maybe not now, but at least in the fall get a couple of people together to plan what we want to do for Arbor Day for um, 2025. Um, I, I think, you know, both Arbor Days have been successful. Um, it'd be nice if we could do something maybe a bit larger, get more people involved. Um, but is anybody interested in maybe serving on a two-person committee to plan Arbor Day for next next year? Not all at once. Now. Yeah, <laughs> I can definitely continue to help with that. All right. Nicole, Arbor Day. Anybody else? Well, I have missed Arbor Day both times. I think it was it on a Friday. Is that my reason, or did I have some? It was. Good reason. I yeah. So, so behind me is Earthview. I've been running Earthview for sixteen years on Fridays, okay. uh, most Fridays, and my last Friday was last Friday, turning okay. it over to one of our alums. Well, so, if, if, if there is nobody else, I'll help Nicole. But I, I think we, I just like to see some planning done. So I'll be back available on Fridays. Okay, great. Okay. And you, and, and you, you're available, James, until what, September? Probably, yes. And, but I'll still be, so I won't, I might not be on the committee anymore after September because we're trying to sell our house. Um, we will be. Um but uh, so I can help with, yeah, I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be a linchpin of anything, but I can, if you meet in September, I can be there. Okay. And if the event is planned in the spring, I certainly still know my way back to town. No, you're still going to be at the college for the next few years, right? Yeah, I have four more years here. Okay, good. Okay, uh, another quick thing, uh, the uh, uh, Nicole on the tree paraphernalia, can we, if we talked about ordering the, um, Telephone pole signs, things like that. Um, I know we, we have uh, we still have the yard signs. I haven't put them all up yet, but are, are can we get something else? I, because I think I I mentioned I was I forget what town I was in, Kingham or something. They had a big sign on the telephone pole that they were a tree city. Um, yep, we maybe like that. We did. Yeah, when we first got accepted, we did go through the pricing and we did authorize the purchase of a given number 
of those street signs through the Arbor Day Foundation. Right. Maybe we need to go find those minutes, confirm how many we were going to buy. And Josh, I think we we maybe you and I just need to connect separately to put place that order based on the commit what the committee approved for the number of signs that we were going to order. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. I feel like it was probably a few months back. It was probably like yeah. the March meeting or the April meeting right before it was whatever the meeting that was right before Arbor Day. Maybe to simplify your search, why don't we just vote again, and then so we don't have to go through anything. I think we, I think it was seven signs, I believe, seven or eight we we had talked about. But would it be simpler simply to have a separate vote, Josh, and right now, so they don't have to go through minutes or anything? Yeah, that that works for me. All right. Uh, yeah, Pat, you're, you're muted, Pat. And Paul is going to put those up, right? Yeah, Paul. Do they have dates on them? Because I still see our older signs still on poles. I know. I know they've got. They should come down. They're new. gonna. Mm -hmm. These will be new. Yeah. These will be the updated ones, and I think that they have a little sort of the way they're set up. They have a placeholder in which, uh, if we get more accolades or updated years, we simply affix that sticker or something that you hang on it. Good. So in other words, the the purchase of the sign should be a one time. And then from here on in, we can update it with, there's different choices, you know, for 10 years or that we earned an extra award so we could add that. But right. for now, I think it would just say we're a tree city. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, but Again, the one I saw, uh, I think it was in Hingham, was very nice and much yeah. more than the one that we have up now. Um, so um, I need a motion to um, purchase, what do we say, eight signs or seven signs? You had said seven. Seven? Okay. We have a motion to purchase seven signs to authorize the spend expenditure on seven signs. Yep, I can make a motion to um purchase seven of the street signs for tree city usa um through the arbor day foundation good is there a second to the motion second motion being seconded all in favor say aye aye aye, aye. aye. aye against motion passes so we will get seven signs okay which we'll send to paul to um put up good very good um, next item is the forestry department tree warden. I have nothing to um, add other than um, I told you before that I did talk to Michael, and uh, he's, he indicated that uh, I suggested to him that if we don't get a forestry department this year, at least give us a paid tree warden, and that um, if necessary, even if you have to share them with another town, do so. Um, he seemed to read of that what I don't know that Paul has talked to him I think there may be some movement there so I don't know what else to tell you but we definitely need a tree warden I, I would I would not want to see this year end without us getting at least the tree warden I have a feeling we're not going to get a forestry department but any I, thoughts? I, I agree that the that is a, that is like necessary because I feel as though the actual work can be contracted out, whereas the tree warden is would be harder to do that unless we share, like you say, with another town. But you know, at least being able to make those decisions, make you know, be able to, um, I mean, technically, we're writing that in our ordinance that this and that is at the discretion of the tree warden, and you know, so we're putting all this um, responsibility on a position that we don't even actually, you know, currently have. So I feel like that's a critical path, and then work to be performed as got you know directed by the tree ward and could be contracted out yep I, so, I so think in in addition to the ordinance having a lot to bear the weight is is the tree warden so doesn't mitigation and those two items really are not going to be effective at all in fact they shouldn't even be voted on uh, yeah. until we have the people who can administer them and that's the tree warden right 
Yeah, so I really true. think no matter how long it takes us to do this, it's not going to be a, to do the tree warden, I mean, to do the uh, mitigation and to do the ordinance. Um, it's not going to go forward until we have a tree warden. We're just cutting yeah. words on paper. We have no authority beyond that. Yeah. No enforcement. I think oh, we should, uh, I agree. I'm sorry, Bill. Go ahead. I think we should uh, agree on an ordinance as soon as possible because um, once that ordinance is in place, it it pretty much demands that we have a tree warden. Yep, I agree. So is is this something that is? Um, I'm wondering if this is really something that needs to come through the town manager or from the town council because it's kind of a a significant budget item, right? That should we be making this case to town council to put it in a budget, and then his job would be merely to in, to no, it, it, um, James, through James. It's all uh, Michael. He 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 uh, puts budget together. He's he's, okay. he's a strong town manager. He has the problem. The the town council has to approve it, but he puts it together. We can't go to the town council. Okay. I mean, the only reason we go to the town town council if we. For whatever reason, we get totally pissed and then uh, just try to go over his head. But that, that's not going to happen. I mean, we're not there yet. Yeah, we're not there. <laughs> so, okay. Um, I agree, by, by the way, I agree with Bill. I think the, the fact that if we get a uh, tree ordinance done in, with, a town, with, a, with a tree warden in it, that puts some pressure to... Um, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. Any other comments on... Tree warden forestry. Okay, the uh, the recommended tree list. I know Pat, you've been. I think you, uh, James, you two have been working on this. You, is there something else you want to add to this, um, Pat? You were saying mm. you were talking to um, Ryan, I believe. Right, right, and uh, we, based upon his suggestions, I updated the previous list that we had. Right, and. Uh, I don't know how we manage that list now. I mean, with these changes, does it get resubmitted? I mean, who has to really approve it? If if right now, the only place where recommended trees are in, as far as I know, is the subdivision control law for the planning board. If we send the, send the, the planning board an updated tree list, they will simply vote on it. They'll do what we ask. I mean, it's a simple okay. process. We do not have to go to the council unless we put it someplace else, like in zoning. But uh, right now, there's nothing in, about trees in, in zoning. So um, has that that list, uh, the updated list, have you, you haven't sent that out to everybody, have you, Pat, or have you? We uh, sent it to you. Okay. And I didn't send it out, did I? Right. But All right. Um, let's... Why don't I, um, I'll send it out to everybody. And at the next meeting, we'll vote on the updated tree list. Okay. I didn't send would it you, to you. Did I? Ray, when you, before you send it out, would you please put a date on it? Okay. There is a date on it. <laughs> I put a date on this version. He'll be yes. sending you a link. Um, and yeah, I did put a date because, uh, and I did not make it editable. I can change it so that it's editable or um commentable but i decided to send this as a a static document so that any changes can be done can be discussed so we don't accidentally end up with different versions so the june 10th it has june 10th because uh, that's when i finally got around to uh typing up what pat had given me um in i kept the old version too i'm not sharing it again to avoid confusion i have whatever the previous one is is on my on my drive, but uh, the link I sent to uh, Ray yesterday is June 10th based on this recent input. I'm already seeing like questions, so I hope you all have questions too. <laughs> okay, let's do this then. I will send out that list that James has. And I don't think there's any need to, unless you want to comment it between now and the next meeting, but we'll put it on the agenda at the next meeting. And if you want to change it at that meeting, so be it. If not, we will approve it at the next meeting. Fair enough? I like but, that. Shirley? One of the things that um, concerns me about <clears throat> just identifying a list of trees 
is how appropriate they are for certain areas. For instance, we've lost a couple of trees down on Broad Street in front of Crispy's restaurant in that block. And if there are wires on, on that side of the road, then the trees that go under those wires should be identified so that we don't get something like a tulip tree or an elm tree or something of that sort that's going to be much too big and end up being pruned until it dies. Uh, we need to be more selective in what we put and where we put it. And people don't know. I, I can tell you right now that if you were to say, Paul, plant a couple of trees to replace the two that were taken down, um, we might not have an appropriate street tree for that area with a, a sidewalk embedding it and po possibly uh, electric wires above it. So something to define what the tree looks like, where it should be in terms of um, its location and things of that sort would be really helpful. Right. I think that's an additional resource that we can create outside of the subdivision tree ordinance. Because yeah. it's kind of it's a very narrow use. And I would love, I mean, because Pat has gathered, uh, this is 90% Pat, we've gathered information about the width and height and all in wetness tolerance and all that kind of thing that I that I love everyone to have a look at. And and I think there's we just need to think of what is a better way to format that than the spreadsheet that we have it in. Yeah. Um, and but, also oh, yeah, definitely. The um that's where an expert that we maybe the tree warden or whatever that would be able to make that decision surely is the, what, what's the proper tree at a pro proper spot mm. i don't think we can put it into the tree list itself uh, obviously much too much but that's a good point we'll have to deal with it well, um, that was some of ryan's suggestions he you know i had asked him for uh street trees that met the rest of our qualifications which were i asked him for uh keystones and natives you know, pollinator trees and natives right. and and uh, four street trees. So we have identified that on the most recent list, but it's it's not clear enough for, you know, the guy off the street, I don't think. Mm -hmm. So James is right about the actual format. Yeah. It's just... right. um, so at the next meeting, um, what, what do you, how do you want this, this to be set up? We will have the, I'll send you the list that James has. You'll be all of you make notes on it for yourselves and then we can just go line by line and talk about it okay. or column by column. Okay. You might not even like some of the columns. I wouldn't blame you. <laughs> that will be a priority of the next meeting. We'll get that done. Yeah. Thank you. Good. Anybody Pat, you look first, please. Cause if there's something I dropped that you already tried to tell me, we can fix that <laughs> first. On that point um an ancillary point um paul wants us to recommend two trees to replace the ones they took down on broad street i have a list of the trees that are planted in that area of broad street and we might want to decide if they're still appropriate trees whether we want to stay with that species or whether we want to develop a new species. There was an attempt originally when we planted those trees on Bedford Street and Main Street and so on to have some kind of order to them and not just put up a helter skelter tree. Mm -hmm. um, I'm happy to share that information with you and you can decide whether you want to continue with the variety that's there or to introduce a new variety. Well, that goes back to your original point, Shirley, about, you know, knowing what type of tree to plant at a certain spot. Um, and, and from my perspective, not being a tree expert, I don't know. And we, we obviously need, I don't know if Ryan can give any input. Uh, well, that's what he sent me, and that's what we put on the list. No, but uh, I mean, when, it would be specific you... to Broad Street even? No, it's uh, street or replacement trees, and he was careful about root damage, uh, that type of thing. But there again, I, th I think Bill can take a look at these as, as well, these additions. Uh, they're at the bottom of the list that James has sent you. Uh, they're all, there's like one, two, three, four. Some of them I don't know if we actually use around here. Hawthorne and Hackberry, 
he recommended those. Um, I know they're not common varieties, but he recommended those for street trees. I think because of the height and uh, low root damage. And, and you'd know about the bill. The two trees that we took down, I believe they were both locusts, weren't they, Shirley? I, I don't remember that. Um, I'd have to look it up, Bill. I can't but, remember what the species were. Predominantly on Broad Street, we use locust and, uh, uh, oh God, Japonica. Uh, anyway, the locust trees, I think, did the best. Okay. And they are hardy and they're, uh, you know, like a, a hawthorn is a, it's a lovely tree for, for a development, but uh, it needs a lot of pruning and uh, it's a kind of tree that's going to get in your face if you're walking down the sidewalk, whereas a locust will have some a little height. I don't know why. I don't know why Ryan recommended it then. Uh, Bill, it, it, in terms of locust, what about the root system? Is well, that that again, you can't guarantee that the the root system is not going to undermine the sidewalk. Uh, if the tree pit is large enough and uh, treated properly, that shouldn't be a problem. And if the tree is planted at the right depth, frequently trees are planted uh, too shallow and the roots develop uh, near the surface yeah. and uh, you get underneath everything. Okay. The only locust on the tree list is called a honey locust. Yes. And it's... It shows a typical height of 70 feet and not res recommended. It's native, but it says, but not recommended for subdivision or replacement. Mm. Uh, maybe moderate root damage. Just It's one of the taller trees on this list, mm. on the, on the non-list. Most of the trees around the common are locust. Interesting. And we, um, not to put things off, but I'm not sure we're ready to make a decision right now. Can we also put that on the agenda of the next meeting? We will make, doing some research, we'll then decide on uh, what to recommend to Paul for those trees. And then we'll obviously allocate the funds to, to do it. Is that, um, unless you feel we can make a decision now, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, what I'm hearing is we don't. I don't have, think so. Okay. Bill, would you uh, have an opinion on uh, two other trees that Ryan recommended, uh, red oak and an eastern red bud? Those are both natives. Yeah. And red oaks are uh, beautiful uh, trees, but I don't, uh, we haven't used them as roadside trees for years. Um, the only street that I can think of where red oaks were put in was the Jamaica Way. And they all got huge, and now they're all gone. Um, and what, what, so what was the other one? Eastern Red. Red. Mm -hmm. No, that's 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 more delicate. I think that's that's not a good uh, sidewalk tree. Again, okay. you know, front lawn in a in a new development would be fine. Or I'm, what I'm hearing is we can't make a decision right now. We should That's true. Yeah. I think I think the list of what has been succeeding over there, if any, would be good. See if there's any overlap between that list and the tree list as it currently stands. And, and if there's something that's succeeding that's not on the list, that should be part of our discussion of about the list. Um, Fair enough. Okay. Anybody else? All right. Um, Nicole has to leave at what time is it? Um, Nicole has to leave at 22 or 3. I just want to jump to new business and come back to the tree ordinance. Um, next fiscal year ends at the end of this month. July is our next fiscal year and it's time for elections. Um, I am, my feeling is I'm, I'm not in favor of people holding positions. So they drop dead. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm in favor of uh, rotating positions. Um, if anybody wants to chair or um, vice chair, or whatever, please say so for that next meeting. If um, nobody wants to, 
Um, I'll probably continue to hope up for only one more year. I think again that people should uh, rotate. But in, in any case, we'll have elections at the next meeting. So just think about that. Also, if you want to do a form, another form in the fall, think about that also, whether we should do it. I thought the one we did was successful. I, I, you know, I think people seem to indicate they got a lot of good information. At the same time, it's good PR for the uh, tree committee. So um, think about that. Okay. Let's go back to the tree ordinance then. And uh, it's been worked on. You, you have a another draft of it. You should I sent it to you or sent to you before. Um, Pat and Shirley have done some work on this. I'm going to ask them how you want to proceed on this. Actually, Pat and I have been working more on mitigation than on the tree ordinance itself. Yeah, but you need a tree ordinance too. Oh, I know, but the mitigation, I think, is part of the tree ordinance. Isn't it the tree ordinance is the bigger picture? The more detailed it encompasses mitigation as well? That's my understanding, anyway. That's uh, so not my understanding, too. Well, I, I don't think mitigation is in the old tree ordinance at all. I mean, it can be. I'm not, I'm not saying that, but um, we are not able to discuss mitigation right now, if my understanding is correct. I mean, it's, it's, it's a bigger topic than we had in, hoped it would be. Correct? I mean, the mitigation, I mean, the, what I looked at just from other towns, I mean, one town had an eight-page mitigation schedule, bigger than the tree ordinance. And, and I thought that the that we would at least be able to put in, as you recommended, Shirley, the actual a, a short mitigation schedule in terms of types of trees and so forth, how much they're going to cost, and put off the mitigation for another time. In other words, uh, we can. Uh, Nicole, have you come across a recent mitigation formula? because uh, the one I was looking at for Wellesley is like 13 years old. So the dollar amounts have substantially changed from then. Mm, yeah, I haven't looked at any lately. Okay. The, the town of Newton uh, has just put out a new tree ordinance that goes into uh, uh, making it so that even a homeowner that wants to take a tree down in his backyard has to get a permit. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very controlling. Um, I don't think anything like that would work in Bridgewater, at least not yet. But uh, that, I haven't seen it, but I'm sure that ordinance is uh, available online. Okay. Well, my concern right now is just how we move forward to get something done. Um, and it seems to me, I thought, maybe I'm mistaken, I thought the draft that I sent to you that came from Shirley and Pat, I believe, was something we could look at today. And that the tree ordinance um, is almost started from scratch. And we have to, I mean, the tree um, mitigation would almost start from scratch on that. What's your pleasure here? Once, once we adopt a tree ordinance, how difficult is it to amend or add to or subtract from it? Um, the vote, vote have uh, Michael submitted to the council and they vote, that's all. So it is something that we can, uh, we could, uh, for instance, once we get a mitigation clause the way we want it, we could then add it to our tree ordinance. That seems logical to me. I, my concern right now is not is simply not putting this off for another meeting and another meeting and another meeting. I'd like to see some progress. At least if we make a decision as to how to proceed, then if next meeting we'll actually be doing something. I, I, I'm in favor of taking our current ordinance the way we have it right now and having the DCR take a look at it, and if they give us the nod, uh, adopt it at that point. Without okay. having a mitigation detailed in it? Well, only if, if we can get that mitigation detail in 
at a later point. Well, as you noticed, Bill, by looking at the Newton tree ordinance, did they have mitigation in theirs? I have not seen that tree ordinance. Because okay. Pat and I have looked at other towns that have mitigation statements or a part of their ordinance, and um, they are much more detailed than anything that we were originally going to do, which was sort of a table of the size of the tree and the cost per caliper. Um, I think we have to decide whether this is going to be a workable, livable ordinance with a mitigation section in it and to what detail it can be followed, or we're going to do a very abbreviated one that will be up for grabs and every contractor who comes before the planning board or any other board will fight for whatever they want and probably win as they have in past years because we don't define things clearly enough. So you're saying let's get the mitigation clause where we want it first. Yes, I am saying that, but I'm also saying when I look at other towns like Wellesley and Concord and towns that have taken the time to do a professional job and writing up these documents, uh, they are much more detailed than we've anything that we've created thus far. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I think they really take the, the knowledge of a professional, not a couple of well-intentioned citizens in the town who are willing to put it together a few sentences and, and hope it's all right and nobody complains. Well, I I think the the tree ordinance we are currently working with you know, that, that has been developed thus far has only addressed public street trees. The right. mitigation we're asking for would potentially be mitigation on private property. I think the ordinance as we have it written, I suppose there's probably fines, right, for um, of given value for breaking, you know, cutting down trees in public but the mitigation is intended to be um, jurisdictional on private property. So I think the last, and forgive me, I've been kind of away for a month or so, but I think we were discussing whether or not we can expand the, the tree ordinance to, you know, address private property. Um, early on in this committee, I remember like a few of the initial meetings where Michael was part of that did not necessarily want to go there. We talked about how we could potentially amend and get in, get these private, you know, mitigation goals as part of some of the other regulations like zoning or planning, subdivision regs and so on. So I think it's still a little bit, I don't know how it ultimately comes forward, but I agree that we, these, the mitigation is extremely important to this committee. I just don't know if it, if it's, Without a professional, perhaps that if we're going to be able to get this written into the the, you know, the ordinance, the tree, street tree ordinance. I thought <laughs> when we put this committee together that we were not going to deal with private trees at all. That we were what? Then not the, going to deal with private trees. Period. But this this exercise to come up with the mitigation calculation is pri private trees. Not necessarily. Because uh, mitigation, though, from my perspective, is a developer comes in, they want to cut down three acres of trees, and they pay for mitigation for them. But those are on their private property. No one's no one's cutting three acres of trees from but town it, owned land. The, but it's part of the approval process of the planning board allowing them to be. I mean, we're doing it right now. We just don't have a formula. That's right. All. But those are private trees, and our tree ordinance only addresses public trees located within essentially the right of way or any other town owned property. Right. But I mean, I'm just saying this is not, it's not as if somebody decides to cut down three trees and is, I'm going to cut down a 70 foot tree in the backyard. That mitigation is not going to affect that at all. Right. 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 But we've got to be clear on that, you know, it, so we have to set what are the, what projects, what triggers these mitigation? Right. What is, what what's the size of the project what's the permitting path it seems for the most part it's projects that are going through 
they're large projects that are going through zoning or planning board. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, that's the way I've always thought it was going to be. I didn't look at it. I, my thought never was that we were going to be talking about mitigation for somebody that cuts down three trees in his backyard. So, but yeah, the threshold, and, and just like Nicole said, with um, with a lot of federal regs, they're not triggered unless some other permitting process right. is play to trigger yeah. it, right? Right. But so that just, I guess that's just reemphasizing where is this mitigation formula going? If if our tree ordinance only covers public trees, does it, it is it going in there? If it, I, I, I may be alone on this. But my idea of the tree ordinance was for developing. In other words, that if a developer comes in, they pay whatever for cutting down so many trees. If it it, it seems to me, and again, maybe I'm the only one, if it's simply if it's not in the tree ordinance, I don't think it's a major problem. Because unless you unless you expand it as you're implying right. to private property. But that's another discussion. I just didn't know we were going that way. Well, I think private property includes anything that's anything that's coming to the planning board is private property. I know that's been said, but as you said, uh, James, it, it triggers the it, the fact that it's not regular private property. Somebody's not uh, if somebody cuts down two trees in the backyard is one thing, but if somebody comes in and wants to put in four houses and they have to cut down an acre a tree, that's different. Right. That, that's right. all. Yeah, I think we're all saying the same thing, but I guess the point is that we keep holding, if, should we hold up this this tree ordinance? I don't think so, because at this point it is only written covering public trees. We need to push that through at, you know, as it as it stands and that this mitigation formula, we then have to figure out if that is an amendment to the tree ordinance or if it's simply like a guidance document for the planning and zoning board and you know town council it's not necessarily a regulation it is a guidance that makes a suggestion um again my concern is moving this along we've, we've been dealing with this a year and a half almost um whether it goes into the ordinance or not let's put that off for another day but based on what nicole said why not we finish what we have for the tree ordinance. And at some point, if we want to insert mitigation, so be it. But at least get the document in some form that we could submit to Michael and he can give to um, um, counsel. Um, I We've said to him, and I think he agrees, at some point, it's got to be somebody else, a professional, has to look at it. But my suggestion is that perhaps we even set up a special meeting, if, you can, if you're available, simply deal with the ordinance and the language that has been proposed because it has been changed since the last time we talked about it and that's just a suggestion i don't know if you agree with it or not but thoughts um was it was bill was it you mentioned a few minutes ago sending it to dcr i i would almost like to send it to them if we can as is we just change the spelling on you know just send it as is and get their input is that i i'm i'm not um I agree, but it's just that there, there. If you look at it, there are areas that have to be that aren't complete, unless you want to send it. Uh, you all have it. I mean, but there, the, the comments are really good. It's just that I'm not sure you want to send it in this form. That's all. That's right. Yeah, I noticed some of these section numbers are out of. They, they're not. They're not. Uh, right. They don't have continuity, so yeah. we have to make sure it's in better shape than it is if if we get it if we get it edited um soonish would we be sending it to town um to town manager or to uh dcr well for, the, for it suggestion if, if, it, if it's one or the other it's got to go to dcr first right right um, but that's a decision we we can make i mean he may want to michael may want to uh Send it to somebody else to have them look at it. Uh, sure. Uh, again, uh, my my concern is simply not simply saying we'll talk about it again. Let's make a definite decision as to what we're going to do. And my suggestion is, if you're willing, um, either put this on the agenda 
or July, or simply set up a special meeting where we do that we only talk about your ordinance as we have it right now, which you all have. I send it to you. Mm -hmm. Either one's good with me. Can, can we do it as a uh, can we do it as an in person meeting? If we if we tell Josh to leave, we can. <laughs> oh, we're still okay. Still well, not allowed. To Pat's point, no. Um, it, sorry, can, sorry to interrupt, Bill. Uh, we are we are having some in person meetings. If you guys would like to get together for something like that, um, just let me know ahead of time because uh, it's the scheduling uh, for a room that can record the meeting is the biggest challenge right now. Oh, okay, that's good news. I, I, I'm all for that. We need to do it. As Pat was saying, uh, the document as written right now is is kind of jumbled. It needs uh, some, uh, no additions or anything, but some organization. And I'm not uh, I'm not equipped to do that kind of thing. I, I know uh, uh, certainly somebody is. But you know what I mean with the the the. Uh, uh, the section numbers and yeah, all right, they're not in order. Why don't we take Josh up on this, and why don't we meet, and we make it we can be face to face, and we can try to reorganize this. If we can't, so be it. But at least we'll make a decision as to what to do. Is that fair? Yes. Can that be our, can our, that be our next meeting? I prefer to do it earlier. I mean, have a special meeting, but. Um, your call. I mean, um, Bill, are you around? No, I'm going to be in Europe for two or two and a half weeks. Um, I'll be around for the next meeting. When are you, are you going in, in July? You're going. I'm going uh, in, next week. Oh, okay. I'll be back uh, the second week of July. Would you cancel your European trip? No. Okay. Uh, no. No. <laughs> Um, okay. Um, Are you Italy, Bill? That's one place, yes. Yes. Oh, good. Good. You and right. President Biden. <laughs> now, what, what are the rest of your summers look like, folks? Well, mine's very dull. Mine is too, but intentionally. <laughs> we, I, I'm actually pretty open for the you know, we're, we got a lot of things taken care of through the ending the last couple of days. So the next month or two, I'm fairly flexible. Nicole, do that optimistically. Yeah, I'm just, um, I'm, I'm, I've got some vacation most of the first half of July, like sort of. So, so I won't be back. Like I won't be back until the 12th. So I'll be available starting the week of the 15th, July 15th. So you won't be here for the next meeting then, right? No. Okay. And yeah. Bill, you're you're gone when again? Uh, the 18th. Of July? No, this this month. June. Okay. Until the uh eighth of July. So Excellent. it sounds like um hmm, that the next meeting is gonna be a bit uh short on people what what's the date for the next meeting it's the uh ninth the ninth you're coming back on monday when you're i'll be here but uh you won't, you won't be here physically but not mentally be very fresh no yeah. but i'm ever fresh anyway josh it, it, is it can we uh change meeting dates yeah you can change meeting dates it's not wrong okay yeah. And uh, Nicole, you said you're leaving when? I am pretty much gone the, the from July 1st through the, I won't be back till the 15th. So the 1st to the 14th, I can't meet. I can meet after July 15th. Okay. Um, what if we change our July meeting to the end of July? That's or even the 16th. Yeah, that's fine by me. The 16th is okay? Yeah, I do have to. I'm going to sign off in a moment, but just did no, you jot not, those no. times down? Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Um, okay, July 16th is okay? That's good for me. Yep. All right, why don't we do that? And let's, um, unless there's, and we'll try to do it in person. Um, and let's, um, the main agenda item will be the, the um, tree ordinance, okay? Fair it's going to be at two o'clock. Pardon me? It's going to be at two o'clock. You want to do two o'clock or do you want to do some other time? That's fine. Okay. okay. I'll, I'll reserve the room for you guys right now. Okay, good. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. It sounds great. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you. Yes. Back to work. Anybody else? Uh, anything uh, new? That's it for me. So we still have to figure out trees for Broad Street, right? We have to do that also. Yeah, the trees. Yeah, Street. we can try to do a little more research. I don't know about Ryan. <laughs> oh, are you we can't plant them before September, October anyway, right? That's right. Yeah, that's right. I can plant them Fourth of July. <laughs> October, October, November, actually. Right. Here we go. Okay. okay. Very good, folks. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank Thanks, you. everybody. Make a motion to adjourn. So moved. A second. Have a nice day. Tomorrow it's going to get hotter tomorrow than the next day. Yeah. Take it easy. Thank you, Ray. Bye, bye, folks. Bye, bye.